Saturday marked the beginning of the biggest draft weekend in fantasy football every year. Many people have completed their drafts for the year, but for those of you who haven't, this video is for you. And even those of you who have completed your drafts, this video can still provide you with great information. For those of you who don't know, my name is Thomas Hilkema. I am a kid in my room, recording this at 11 o'clock at night. And here are some fantasy league winners for you. Now, we all know the Christian McCaffreys and Saquon Barkleys who are almost guaranteed to be great. But what about those who aren't being talked about enough, that still have potential to be great? Uh, these players aren't necessarily sleepers, I would say. Um, I'd be called league winners. I think the main difference is um, these players are X-factors who can push you over the top with a little bit higher potential than those of those that we label sleepers. Um, in this video, I will give you a list-ish. I will, I will give you a player from each offensive position because kickers and defense, I don't think there's going to be any real league winners from those positions. Um, but yeah, so for quarterback, running back, tight end, and wide receiver, not in that order, switch wide receiver and tight end. But um, yeah, you're going to get a league winner, at least I believe, for each one of those positions. Let's start off with quarterback. Um, it's one of the most exciting positions to watch, one of the most important positions to um, for fantasy football, well not for fantasy football, in normal field, but for fantasy football it's almost the exact opposite. Um, it's probably the least meaningful position when it comes to these league winners, as your top 20 quarterbacks will all be scoring around the, around the same amount of points per uh, per game. But if I did have to choose one to be a league winner, um, I'd probably have to go with Carson Wentz from Philadelphia. Uh, Wentz, in my opinion, has probably the highest boom-bust potential out of just about every single quarterback this year. Um, he is one of the most talented in the entire league, uh, but the main concern, at least for me, is his injuries. Um, in 2018, he had an MVP caliber season but missed the end of the year um, with a, I don't remember the exact injury, but missed it with an injury. And he missed out on the MVP, uh, the, uh, the MVP award. Um, he missed out on an amazing playoff run and Super Bowl championship. But after that, ran Nick Foles out of town, said bye-bye, um, and produced some fine numbers um, this last year. But keep in mind, um, Wentz's top receiver has been his tight end, Zach Ertz, which Ertz is an amazing talent, amazing tight end, but not somebody you want as your number one receiver. You, at least I wouldn't, I don't feel like my tight end should be my consistent number one receiver every single year. You need to have a solid wide receiver in there some at least some point which Alshon Jeffrey has had had the potential to be the um a solid wide receiver but his his um catching consistency has not been consistent at all which led the Eagles to ad address this problem this offseason when they drafted speedy wide receiver Jalen Rager um he's not the biggest not the most athletic, but he is fast. Rager is someone who compares very well to Devin Hester, uh, same height, 5'11", only a six pound difference. Uh, Rager's 196, um, Hester was 190. But um, Rager does have very good hands. So maybe maybe something closer to like a Tyreek Hill, just not quite Tyreek Hill. It's not like, I, won't, I don't wanna say like a Walmart Tyreek Hill, Cause that's that's a little too mean, especially just for a rookie. But um, very comparable to, uh, I would say, closer to Devin Hester with better hands. Um, anyway, the addition of Rager gives Wentz a very solid target, someone who can get open on plays, someone who won't always drop the ball. Sorry, Jeffrey. But um, Wentz was producing top 10 QB numbers without real solid wide receiver play. Now he has Alshon Jeffrey, who is not horrible, 
Jalen Rager, who's a, who's a first-round draft pick, should be a very good wide receiver, and still has Zach Ertz, with the defenses also focusing quite a bit on um, Miles Sanders. This year could be one of Wentz's biggest. And this is all without mentioning the fact that he is mobile. Wentz is, in my opinion, the th- third best um, mo- mobile quarterback that can throw. I don't know if I phrased that right. But behind Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes, I don't think there's a better dual threat quarterback in the league. I mean, um, Je- Lamar has his running ability, best runner in the league. Um, but he doesn't have the throwing skills that Wentz does. And Wentz isn't oh, too far behind Lamar, I would say, in um, in terms of rushing ability. Lamar is flashier, but Wentz gets the solid, can get a solid 10, 12 yards per play. Now, um, we're talking about ADP, which comes into play with this. Um, Wentz is currently being drafted as the QB12, at around the 109-110 spot. Now, I believe Wentz can finish anywhere, with 12 being about the lowest, but I could see him possibly being the best quarterback in the league. I, that's, a bit of a, that's a bit of a bold statement, and it would require a lot of things to go right for the Eagles and for Wentz, but it could happen. It, it very well could happen, but probably a more realistic... Um, finish for Wentz, at least for me, it'd be top five, six, that's around where I would have him finishing, at least in terms of his potential. Now on to running backs. Running backs is probably the most talented position in fantasy. I mean, in just about every single draft, your first overall pick's a running back. I don't I don't care whether it's McCaffrey, Barkley, Elliot, it's it's going to be a running back. But this also means that it's one of the shallowest positions in the league. There's, like I mentioned, you're great players. Um, you got a few solid tiers of players. But after that top three or four tiers, it's just, it's not great. Whereas when, in terms of wide receivers, that, that position is insanely deep, where it goes six, seven, eight tiers deep of solid players. Now, that's why picking a solid running back is very important. And um, I feel like there's a few directions you can go with this um, league winner's pick. Um, you have a player like Joe Mixon, who has been at the back end of the top tier for quite a while. Um, you have Kenyon Drake, who steps, who played very well. At, I, yeah, he, he was the running back at the end of the season for um, Cliff Kingsbury and played fairly well. Or um, you can go in the direction of Antonio Gibson or Bryce Love from Washington, who have a, had amazing camps, and have, all I've heard is good news coming from Washington. But the player I'm going to go with is David Johnson. Um, last year, DJ was supposed to be one of the best fantasy players in the league. He had already come off a top running back finish year, um, and he was expected to do that again this upcoming year. But things didn't go to, as planned. So, in the offseason, uh, Arizona was given an offer they couldn't refuse, and if they did refuse, they would have probably been one of the worst non well, I don't know, worst non trades in history. Anyway, it was completed, and it's one of the most lopsided I have ever seen. Granted, that's only 17 years, but one of the most lopsided I've ever seen. Um, the Texans got. Um, David Johnson and a second round pick and a fourth round pick this year, this upcoming year, second round pick in this last draft. Whereas the where the Texans gave up DeAndre Hopkins and a fourth round pick for David Johnson, basically. But now that DJ's in Houston, he needs to produce. And I think he should be able to. I mean, it's where else is the ball gonna go on offense? I mean you have three solid wide receivers, but they're all like number two or number three wide receivers. None of them stand out as a go-to guy for me, which means David Johnson's the player you go to. He is a great pass catcher, but he's also a workhorse back. I think um, I think Bill O'Brien would be stupid 
well, which isn't saying much already because look at his trades, but would be stupid and would probably lose his job if he doesn't use um David Johnson. Granted, I'm, I'm one of the few that are high on David Johnson. I don't think he's worth DeAndre Hopkins, but I do think that he's not he's not a bust or a one or a one time a good good one year. He's more than that. He will be he will should have a very solid year this year. But not too many people agree with me as his ADP is around running back 19 and pick 47, which is, again isn't horrible, but I think he can get into the top 15 running backs, which for for a player jump, but 15 is almost a guarantee, I would say. I would not be surprised if he ends up top 10, top 10 running back in 2020 for fantasy. That's my claim on David Johnson. Now, quick promotion. Go. I have a website. Well, I have two websites set up. Um, one is for just um, NFL draft grades. If you want to go check that out, what I thought about this slash this 2020 draft. This next one that I'm setting, I'm still working on, but it is it is officially published? Published. Um, it's a fantasy football website. Um, it has the best URL you have ever heard of. It is xtrain twenty two x dot wixsite dot com slash t o t h fantasy football very complex but um there will be a link in it down below go check it out right now there's um just rankings but by the end of this weekend there should be sleepers um probably a little something else i'm working on um it should be very good and hopefully very helpful for this upcoming year Wide receiver is another tough position to pick a player from. There are very, so many good wide receivers that I might even have to make a separate video on them, and I probably will. But the player I'm going to pick for this is Stefan Diggs. Diggs is probably most known for the Minneapolis Miracle, in which he jumped over a, a genius Saints defender to go out and beat the Saints in the playoffs. But he, and as most people know, he's been a very good player outside of that. And he and Adam Thielen have been probably the best wide receiver duo in the NFL, I would say. But Diggs felt overlooked and wanted out, so he was traded to Buffalo. And I think this is probably the best place that Diggs could have landed. He's the clear number one in Buffalo, and has a quarterback that is not afraid to throw the long ball. Diggs should benefit greatly from being on the same field as Josh Allen, and as far as Diggs is, should be concerned, this is an upgrade at quarterback, as Kirk Cousins didn't always want to throw the ball downfield. Um, granted, Buffalo's offense will be a run-focused offense. Diggs should be the number one receiver over uh, around 125, 130 targets, I would say. But, um, but yeah, he is currently being taken as the number 26 receiver with the 71st overall pick. This is amazing value. Um, there are only two concerns for me. Um, one, Diggs needs to stay healthy. Um, he has had a few injury concerns recently, including a back injury th Thursday. Um, it doesn't seem too serious as of now, but um, he needs to be able to stay on the field. And the second concern is the inconsistency. The injuries tie into this. Um, not full the full reason for the inconsistency, but um, Diggs hasn't been the most consistent player, whether that's been because of the injuries or just Adam Thielen decided to be the best receiver in the NFL. But whatever it is, Diggs hasn't always been the most consistent player. And now, as I mentioned, you mix that in with the run-heavy offense um, and an inconsistent Josh Allen, it raises a few question marks. However, I think Sean McDermott is smart enough to realize the type of talent that he is working with, and I have heard nothing but good news coming out of the Bills organization um, regarding Josh Allen, who I heard dominated a pre uh, one of their practice scrimmages. So I feel fairly optimistic. Um, now, I don't believe Diggs will be on um, that wide receiver one tier, but I do think he can finish as a solid wide receiver two for your team, which is much better than where his ADP is projecting him to be. Now, finally, the tight end position. This is one of the most intriguing positions, but also one of the most solidified position in terms of players' rankings now and where they will end up at the end of the year. 
I mean, you have your t your solid your top two and Kittle and Kelsey in whatever order you want to put them in. And then you have Ertz and Waller, two very solid tight end um, players that will give you um, great weeks and then solid weeks, but not quite to the level of Kittle and Kelsey. Kelsey. Um, but after that, it's a bunch of question marks, um, whether that's um, high ceiling, low floor type of players or players who are just inconsistent in general, and even some players we just don't know about, <laughs> Rob Gronkowski. Um, with that being said, for this, I'm going to select Johnny Smith, or Jonu Smith, Johnny Smith, I think it's Jonu Smith, um, the tight end front, or the Titans. Uh, Smith is already one of the biggest, strongest, fastest tight ends in football, and even the supreme football god himself, Bill Belichick, has called him one of the best tight ends in football. Smith should help a tight end's receiving game that needs to be effective if they want to be successful successful again this year. Uh, both Smith and A.J. Brown, their um, wide receiver, should be great um, targets for Tan Hill. At least, as I mentioned, they need to be. The Titans can no longer fully lean on Derrick Henry to win them, game, win, them, win them games as they did last year in the playoffs, and the passing game will need to be effective for them. And I think it will, at least to the extent where Jonu Smith will have a very productive year, putting him into the conversation as a top 10 fantasy tight end, if not getting close to that top 5. Um, in terms of ADP, however, Smith is the tight end 20 and being selected around the 167th overall pick. This is amazing value for a tight end with Smith's potential. Now, that's all I got for today. Um... May, I'm probably going to come back to that idea of a wide receiver video. Um, so yeah, so look out for that. Thank you very much for um, watching this video, if anyone does watch this video. Um, yeah, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you very much, and adios.